At my first service station stop, when I went to the toilet, my necklace broke. I got myself a cheese and ham toasty bite from Subway and a decaf cup of coffee from Starbucks and had to run away from a wasp when trying to eat it. I finally arrived at Boness on Windermere at 5.15pm. So here we are in my B&B room. We've got a desk in front of me with a kettle. I won't be using that. Glass for water. Hot chocolates, definitely will eat those. And then you've got tea bags, coffee sachets. But thankfully they have been really kind and they have given me decaf. There's some little milks, but I don't use those. I'll tell you why. And then this is my little bed. It looks a mess because I've literally only just got in here and been chatting with the owner. And they have put a little fridge in here for me. And in the fridge they have put a lactose free milk from Audi, funnily enough. And whilst I've got the fridge open, I will put my tablets in. And so that's a little fridge they put in here for me so I can have lactose milk. I have got a little, I've left some stuff on the floor. Ooh, got a little wardrobe some chest of drawers so I will take myself out take my clothes out of my case I've got light switches one's for the main room one's for the bathroom no sorry tow light that is heated towel rail that is for the bathroom and then this is my bathroom so, sink, and they have kindly lowered the shower for me. So, yeah, tiny little bathroom, tiny little bedroom, but I'm only going to be sleeping in here, so it's not like I'm going to be spending hours in here. So, yeah, there you go, there's a tour of my little BB room. Later that evening, I took a walk down to Bowness on Windermere. Look at this. The sun is setting beautifully. And there's even some swans on the lake. Yes. So here we are, Lake Windermere, and the sun is just setting. This was my dining room table for the next few days. I chose to have a very boring breakfast, cereal and yoghurt. I'd never eaten these Audi yoghurts before, but I have now. So my first big outing to the Lake District was to Aero Force Waterfalls. Here is Aero Waterfall. I'm going to climb up higher. You can just about see a bridge, so I'm going to go across that bridge. Unfortunately, we couldn't get too close to this waterfall as the footpath they had built leading to it had had a tree knocked down on it. The viewing platform was days from opening when the tree fell down on it and ruined it.
driving back through the Glen riding pass that I'd already driven through on the way to Air Force. It was stunning scenery so I had to stop and take a few photos of course. So we are going through the Glen Pass. Because Glen Pass. I'm on my, my way back down. Tuesday afternoon was about visiting the Peter Rabbit attraction. This place was about 100 yards from my B&B, so it's walkable. I bought my ticket and then headed to the cafe to get some lunch as it was 3pm. I think in the whole of my five days I ate about three toasted tea cakes. I love them. I grew up reading the Peter Rabbit books or having them read to me, so I really liked this attraction. They also had McGregor's Garden out the back. I saw this randomly sitting on the table in the gift shop and just had to laugh. After visiting the Beatrix Potter attraction, I went down to Lake Windermere, which is a short walk, and bizarrely enough, saw this lady with all the birds on her. Very odd. I think she was a bit of an attention seeker. Earlier on, when I crossed the road to the lake, a police motorcycle came past me and stopped the traffic on the other side of the road. I didn't think much of it, but there was no traffic, so I crossed the road. Two seconds later comes another police escort, a load of security and Kate Middleton in a black Range Rover. She had been in Ambleside for the day. This is her in the helicopter going off. It's amazing watching a gaggle of geese flying off over a lake. After a little walk around some of the lake, it was time to go and search for some dinner and hope that I could get in somewhere. I went for a kid's margarita pizza with salami and a J2O to drink. By the time I'd finished eating, the sun was just about to start setting behind the mountains. As I sat on a bench watching the sun go down, I was also having a video call with my cat, Blue, via my brother. You see, before I came away on holiday, he decided not to eat much of his food and again he was still doing it whilst I was away on holiday. I kept saying, Blue, eat your food, and he used to reply, No, in a meowed voice. After taking this photograph, I decided to head back to the B&B as it was getting rather cold. The sky did go a little bit pinky, but unfortunately my camera didn't pick it up properly. Today I went on a coach tour with mountaingoat.com. It was a really good tour, six lake tour. It's a half day tour from 10am to 2pm. I was a bit anxious during this tour as I suffer with motion sickness, but the motion sickness tablet helped. The Lake District has 5,000 miles of dry stone walling. Yorkshire has more, 12,000 miles of dried stone walling. This Kirkstone Pass pub has only just recently had electricity put in in the last few months. We got to stop at Red Pit Car Park to stretch our legs and look at the views. We pass an old quarry pit on the left hand side of us. Did actually drive this pass yesterday on the way to Air Force Waterfall, but didn't get to stop on the way going there. This lake in front of us is Brothers Water, but I can't be 100%. I saw so many lakes that day. Of course, had to do a selfie. For some reason, this photograph reminds me of the Wizards of Oz. I think it's something to do with the pathway. Here's a fun fact for you. When I was younger, I used to absolutely hate scenery. It's boring, but now I love it. Earl's Water Lake.
we were able to stop and take photos around Earl's Water Lake. There are many types of sheep around the Lake District. The Herswick sheep in the field. We then made a stop here, Castle Rig Stone Circle. We had just started the autumn equinox that day, very apt. Although it is called a stone circle, it isn't actually a circle, it's an oval. The stones are also all different shapes and sizes to blend in with the mountains in the background. Here I am standing almost in the middle of the circle doing a 360 with the stones behind me. I am kicking myself for not bringing my selfie stick with me, which I'd left back at the B&B. Then I did it from the other way. So first time I went and clockwise and then this time I'm doing clockwise. In Wiltshire they have Stonehenge, but you can't go in the middle of the circle and you can't even touch the stones. These castle reg stones actually predate Stonehenge. This is Thursmere Lake. The water from this reservoir actually serves the whole of Manchester, which is why it's nearly run dry. There was talk of bringing a hose pipe fan in, but they didn't do it for this year. Today was actually meant to be a drizzly rainy day, but we were surprised with pleasant lovely sunny weather. I think this is called the Lion and the Lamb Hill because of the shapes at the top of the mountain. There we stopped at Grassmere where we had an hour for lunch, although we needed to have more time to actually get into a restaurant or a cafe, sit down and eat some food. We had to have a quick meal so I had toasted tea cake and a chocolate milkshake. I forgot to take a photo of the tea cake and the chocolate milk. However, we were being bombarded by wasps. More about Grassmere and Grassmere gingerbread in the next episode. The garden centre had these lovely wooden sculptures. And also the sheep. After what seemed like a quick hour in Grassmere, it was time to get back on the coach and head back for the afternoon. As I said earlier, this was only a half day tour from 10 till 2. Once I was dropped off at my bus stop, it was time to head back to the B&B. Motion sickness tablet had made me really sleepy. Once I felt a lot better from my snooze, I decided to walk up to Windermere. It's a much longer walk than walking down to Bowness. I decided to go to Windermere for dinner tonight. Again, I didn't book, but was very lucky to be able to get a table for one. This is the second restaurant I have seen coffee beans put within the table. I was actually a bit disappointed with this restaurant. It was hot and stuffy, no windows open. And during these COVID times, you need to have windows open for ventilation. After I finished my dinner, I came out of the restaurant with the sun looking pretty behind the clouds. Coming up in part two, I give you a tour around the B&B I stayed in. I go to a wildlife park and I revisit Grassmere again.